Let me read to you a passage from the 16th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 19 to 31. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the second week of Lent. St. Luke writes, Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you, that you received what was good <coughs> during a lifetime while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours, or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. That's from Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. <clears throat> we are led to think of Christian love. What do I mean? Well, that gospel passage that I've just read presents one of the parables that have passed into what might we might call world literature. The poor man Lazarus and the rich man who entirely neglected him are figures that have been embedded in Christian culture as encapsulating the spirit of Christianity. At various points in the Gospels, our Lord makes it clear that our judgment will depend on how we treat others. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25, our Lord describes the general judgment of all the nations gathered in the presence of the King. To those on his right and to those on his left, he will say that whatever they did to the least of his brothers, they did to him. Christ our judge will take it very personally if we treat others unjustly, unkindly or unmercifully. Here in a different gospel, the gospel of St. Luke, our Lord teaches the seriousness of any disregard for the unfortunate and the needy. In our Lord's story, Lazarus is poor, hopelessly sick and very hungry. He did not even have the dignity of being protected from the dogs. He lay continually at the door of the rich man, and we read, would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. But it was not to be. The rich man utterly disregarded him. He saw him constantly, but his heart was entirely hardened against helping him at all. Now all this had eternal consequences. When each died, the situation was totally reversed. The rich man went to hell, and the poor man went to happiness in the arms of Abraham. God had taken the rich man's utter neglect of the poor man personally, and regarded it as an immense offence, meriting eternity in hell. The seriousness of injuring others or failing to assist them in their injuries would perhaps not have dawned on fallen man had it not been revealed by God. But revealed to us, it has been. And even in our parable, Abraham tells the rich man buried in hell 
that all this had been taught by Moses and the prophets, and that this teaching should have been sufficient for him. So central is this point to Christianity that, in the constant stress on assisting those in need, Christ himself has at times be forgot, been forgotten. By this I mean that, at times, Christianity, or being a Christian, has taken on the connotation of being virtually a philanthropist. That is to say, it has often been forgotten that we serve Christ when we serve the needy. Furthermore, the love of Christ and the acceptance of the revelation that he identifies with the poor provides a tremendous motive for loving and serving the needy. Thus it is that the saints have been distinguished for their love of the poor, which was a constant expression of their love for Christ, whom they knew to be present especially in the poor. They knew that to neglect the needy was to direct an affront to Christ. We think of St. Vincent de Paul. We think of Frederick Osnan, the founder of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. We think of Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, known throughout the world as Mother Teresa, almost a, by, a modern byword for Christian sanctity. All this stands to reason because what is it that God himself has done? He who was divinely rich made himself poor in order that we who are poor might be rich in him. St. Paul tells us that Christ was in the form of God, but did not cling to his equality with God. He divested himself of his glory and made himself as men are and humbler still, even to death on a cross. God served us who are needy to the point of impoverishing himself on the cross. His children who aspire to be like him must also love and serve the needy. That is the message of our gospel passage today, and our eternity depends on it. Let us take to heart God's love for all his children, especially the neediest. Christ commands us to love them with the love with which we should love him. Let us pray for the spiritual insight and the persevering love to be able to do this.